Listen carefully. Hear that? That's the future of sound. As the great American poet Brian Wilson once said, I'm picking up good vibrations. When stuff vibrates, it causes air molecules to move around, which causes other air molecules to move around, and so on, until they make contact with your eardrum, which causes that to vibrate, pushing those vibrations through three tiny bones in your middle ear, eventually reaching your cochlea, which translates those vibrations into electrical impulses, and your brain interprets that as sound. And sound can be really powerful. It can move you. <laughs> but it can also physically move you. So here are three ways that sound could really shake up the future. One is that doctors could potentially use sound to diagnose cancer patients. There's a rare type of cancer cell called the circulating tumor cell, or CTC. Doctors can find them in some cancer patients that have localized tumors. It happens to be in their bloodstream. So if you could separate the CTCs from the blood cells, you could perform a liquid biopsy on the patient. Recently, a collection of scientists and engineers from multiple universities teamed up to create a micro fluidic device to separate CTCs from blood cells using sound. All right, here's how it works. Imagine that you have a very narrow channel and blood can flow through it. You also set up little transducers that emit sound along this channel. The transducers push various cells based upon their properties. So if you tune a transducer to push CTC cells one way and blood cells another way, when you get to the end of the channel, you have a separation of CTCs and healthy blood cells. That allows you to analyze the sample and see how the cancer patient is doing. Now this technology is still in its infancy, but I expect we're going to see doctors use it really soon. Meanwhile, at Ohio State University, scientists have discovered an interesting relationship between sound, heat, and magnetic fields. Now, sound and heat, it's not a huge surprise. After all, sound is when matter vibrates. Heat, at its most basic level, is atomic vibration. So where do the magnetic fields come in? Well, the team used really powerful magnetic fields on non-magnetic materials, stuff like glass or stone, and they discovered they could affect phonons, which are the individual particles of sound and heat. This means that with a strong enough magnetic field, you could potentially control heat and sound. At the moment, there's not a practical application of this technology simply because it needs too much power to generate those magnetic fields, but I expect we're going to see more from this in the future, so stay tuned. One thing we can do right now is extinguish fires just using sound. You've probably seen the viral video of Viet Tran and Seth Robertson, students from George Mason University, who created a fire extinguisher that uses sound to extinguish flames. Here's how it works. It generates a low frequency between 30 and 60 hertz, which is in the low range of human hearing, and that ends up pushing the oxygen away from fuel. Now, if you remember our basic fire triangle, there are three things you need for a fire. Heat, fuel, and an oxidizer. So by removing oxygen, the fire goes out. Now, this could be incredibly useful. You could install it in a kitchen and perhaps head off any kitchen fires before they get dangerous, or maybe even put it in a spacecraft in the future to head off potential catastrophes. So these are just three ways that sound could shape our future. And there's so many more I could talk about, but I'll get to those in more episodes of Forward Thinking down the line. For the meantime, I have a question for you guys. Which application of sound do you think sounds the coolest? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit like and join the Forward Thinking Think Tank by subscribing to the channel. Then treat yourself. Check out one of these videos over here.